Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about the um, the Easy 3D X1. There won't be a live stream this week. My sister visited when she traveled back from Vegas to Tennessee and you know gave us all the flu. <laughs> and it's hit me hard. Yeah, coughing is one of the most painful things in the world. At least right now it is. So um, let me show you some of the things that this printer is doing and some suggestions that I have for easy to read on how to fix it. Okay. So here we are printing the child by Inkspire. Um, some of the prints that I've gotten from it. This is our first print, the Cali Cat. This came on the SD card. Then we have... Um, the Yoda Marvin. I put a little bit of um, acrylic paint on there. Obviously, it's not two color, but not bad. Just a little bit of droopy butt. I do have a parts cooling fan I will be adding to this. I printed the vase. Very nice, and it is airtight. Then I printed something quite a bit more complex, and I was very, very impressed with how well it came out. It's a little lizard model girl thingiverse. I'll try to remember to post the links down below. Obviously the underhangs are pretty rough, but not bad. Really not a bad print. There we go. Give it better focus. Even the little points. Really, really impressive. You'll discover that if the footprint of your model is much larger than this, you're going to run into a problem. I'll get to that in a minute. Then I decided to go super complex. This was a 28 hour print, two pieces. This is Kajai Designs Zelda. And it came out very, very impressively. Little hand details there. All the details on the dress. Really impressive print. Little bit of goofiness on the ears there because of the lack of parts cooling. But in general, very, very nice. This is also done at 0 0.1 millimeters. So the printer is capable of some pretty decent resolution. This print really impressed me. Then I switched colors, printed a Marvin Groot, which again came out excellent. And this one, the key ring actually came out. Again, parts cooling will fix that. This one barely even has any droopy butt. Very impressive. I found out my dice box fits on here, so I tried to print that. And you'll notice the bottom is not flat. That's where we get into the trouble. This print here, you'll actually notice there's an error right in the middle there. That's because the, the bed on this is two magnets. So it's two soft magnetic sheets and they're not strong enough at all. You'll notice I have binder clips on here. That's because when it got to here, the magnetic surface bowed up from the warping plastic until it popped off and moved. Um, so unless you're doing small stuff like this, put a couple binder clips on here because this magnetic bed will pop up. Um, easy thread, easy thread, easy thread. Um, you need to fix this. So this needs to be a rigid plate, so a stronger magnet. So you need to use a thicker, stronger magnet on the bed. And this surface here needs to be rigid, not flexible. The entire surface area magnetically is strong enough to hold down. But once this, you can see it here, see how it's warping up? Once this begins to warp up, the remaining area in contact is no longer strong enough to hold it in position. You can see this is all warped up, see? because it can't hold it anymore. The plastic pulls it right off. The plastic pulls the two magnets right apart. So this needs to be a steel plate. Um, the, the holes are a good idea for alignment, but this needs to be a steel plate, and this bottom surface here needs to be a nice, stronger magnet. Um, you have to use a removable build plate on this because you'll destroy this plastic um, frame if you try to get a print off there without it. I did notice a small QC issue. 
you can see that one bearing block is separating. So the thread's pulled free, so I'm going to have to glue that back together. Uh, I designed a new spool holder. This will be on Thingiverse, the link will be down below. This spool holder will print not on this machine, although I am going to split it so it can print on this machine if you really want to do that. Um, but this one prints without support in one piece. Works a lot better, it just pops right on top of the middle here. I'm going to attach a little block between these two here, or these two here most likely, so that this can be popped off and mounted here, because I want to make this portable. I just think that'd be fun. Another thing I need you to do is to, um, you need a clip here to attach this, like this, okay? This needs to attach here like this, because as you can see, it gets in the way of the bed. Um, I've had this snag a few times on the bed. It actually gets down in here and it snags. We're up high enough that it's pulling it away from the bed now. But the lower Z heights, this will actually snag on the bed. So simply having a clip back here to attach this fixes that problem entirely. Um, something else, this is a suggestion, not a problem. It reads whatever G-code file you put on the SD card. The problem is you really can only have one G-code on there because it reads the newest file. I thought it was file name, but it's not. It's newest file. If you could change that so it reads the first file name instead of the newest file, that would allow me to simply put a zero in front of whatever file I want to print so I could load 20 files on there. And then I could pop that memory card in my cell phone and simply rename whatever file I want to print to zero file name. And then it'll print that file. If you can do that, if that's possible doing firmware, I'd like to see that happen. Um, one of the reasons I designed this new spool holder, besides the fact that um, it allows me to make this portable, is that this didn't work very well. So this here is designed to mount like this. which is actually pretty nice, and the frame provides support for this thin piece of plastic. The problem is that only works for these spools. And the reason that's a problem is that most of the spools we get are this kind of spool. And this kind of spool is too big to use that spool holder in that location. Oops, hopefully that didn't just ruin that print. Mm -hmm. um, so the only way to use this one is to, is to um, if I can get it off, there we go, is to turn it around this way and mount it. Now it works with either kind of spool. The problem is now this thin acrylic has no support and it tends to bend even after you tighten up the screws. It tends to want to bend outwards. Um, so either make this taller so that it can support that size spool or just do this. So this is a, a nice one-piece spool holder I designed for this printer. And it just sits here like that. So overall, very, very impressive. I, I love the results I'm getting from it. I never expected it to get these kind of results. Especially this one. This is just an incredible print. The other problem that I'm having is that it is mirroring the prints. So the firmware has a bug where it's mirroring the prints. When you're printing something like this or this, it doesn't matter. But to show you what I'm talking about. Here's what she should look like. And yet here's what it prints. If you look carefully, you'll see they're mirror images of each other. Here, her um, chin arm is on the left. Here, her chin arm is on the right. Now, for models like this, or this, or this, or this, that doesn't matter. But as soon as you print a model that has any kind of text or logo in it, you'll notice the problem right away. Um, there we go. Everything's backwards. East is west, west is east. And the um, letters are upside down. It's actually printed like this. So I believe the y-axis is inverted, because if I do this, it's correct. 
okay so one of the axes is inverted the only way to fix that is you'll have to mirror the image in your slicer and you'll have to do that every single time there is no setting in the slicer to adjust that by default so that is something they will have to fix but overall very impressive I, I really like what this printer is capable of um, I did have a problem where it was squishing the first layers you can see it here it's what we call elephant's foot come on you booger there it goes see how those first few layers are a bit squished um, that's especially a problem when you try to print higher resolution but now notice this one's not squished at least not as squished. I was tweaking and adjusting it. Um, the problem is you're using a belt for your Z-axis, which means there's slack in that belt. So when you home the printer, the, the tension is applied going down instead of up. So as the printer moves up layer by layer, it's not actually moving. So those first two or three layers are just being rammed into each other. You can see that pretty effectively on this, how those first couple layers, and you can see how the NASA logo is reversed. You can see how the first few layers are just smashed together. And that's why you can see right through to the infill. Because those first few layers were just being smashed on top of each other. So to fix that, I added a g1 z0.2 and a g92 command to my start script i will have that text below and also the profile i have in my g drive has that built into it so you have to live level the bed you insert that g code what happens is it homes and then it lifts up 0.2 millimeters by lifting up 0.2 millimeters it's not actually going up to 0.2 millimeters it's taking up the slack in the belt drive so that when you actually start printing, it actually starts lifting up because the slack has already been taken up. Basically, I'm pre-tensioning the belt in the correct direction, and that does fix that problem. Otherwise, I'm impressed, and I did screw it up. Yeah. Yeah, I caused a, a shift when I got the spool stuck in here. That was my fault. But I'm gonna redo this anyway because of that missing layer. So let's stop this. Do I just hit the play button to stop it? Yes, but I can show you the kind of quality it's getting. Orange is a little easier to see, but the quality is quite astonishing for such a little machine. Look at that. That's really impressive. I mean, really impressive. You can see this is all warped. See that? And that's because this surface is not stiff enough. This needs to be a plate. Um, ideally a spring steel plate with a nice strong magnet here to hold it down. Um, if you could do that, that would be tremendous. You see, this doesn't even stay anymore. See, it doesn't even stick. That's because this is so warped now that not enough of the magnet is touching the other magnet to hold it in place. So this just moves around. Um, now once I peel this off so that this can flatten itself against the bed again now it stays put see see now it's not moving um, the problem is the part warps even PLA warps and because this surface is soft it is warping with the plastic and once enough of this warps it just pushes out of the way and the whole thing is able to slide so that does need to be updated. Um, for anybody who has this printer, a temporary fix is actually pretty easy. Get that bed on there nice and just put three clips on it. I would suggest two clips up here and one clip back here and that'll hold it in place just fine. It's still gonna warp. You're still gonna have a slightly non-flat surface, but as you can see, that's not a big deal. You know, overall, nice print. Support comes away nice and clean. Very nice, actually. I'm surprised that came off that clean. I'm impressed. Now this here is because of the um, when it broke free from the well, when the bed broke free and it was sliding around. That's what this gap came from. Uh, come on, focus, focus, you. <laughs>
there it is see that gap there i didn't realize it but the magnetic surface had released so it had turned um but yeah i'm impressed i'm very 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 impressed I really did not expect this toy little printer to produce prints of this kind of quality. Uh, all it needs is better spool holder, an attachment for the cable to keep it out of the way, um, a stiff bed, you know, a steel plate with a stronger magnet, and a parts cooling fan. That's it. Uh, five bucks worth of parts, and you'll be good to go. Well, five bucks from the manufacturer, a little bit more for the end user. But if you have any questions, ask below. You guys have a good day. And here's that last print off of the Easy 3 x wad As you can see, it's actually quite an excellent print. Support came off, no problem. I think this is by Inkspire. Lost mint or something like that. There's your zipper line up back. The zipper line is not that bad. And this is that 0.2 millimeter. Even the overhang is not bad considering the lack of cooling. That's really not bad. Might have to paint him up. There you go. Those are the prints that I got off my little X1 here. I am quite impressed with it. I tried printing my dice box, but it did not come out that great. Um, you can see it's massively warped because the, the magnetic surface, when you print something large, like anything much bigger than this, um, this will pull up. It just can't hold. The magnets are not strong enough, and this is not stiff enough. So you have to use some clips, but of course, even with the clips, that'll keep it from moving, but it will still warp. So you're not going to have the greatest time printing something with a large contact patch with the build surface. But beyond that, I'm impressed. It works well.